Here's a short introduction to the readings for Tuesday, September 30th. We're going to read a chapter, chapter 6 from Gus Spess' book, um, Bridge at the Edge of the World. This is a chapter that I really like. I find it very challenging. Um, it asks us to question our basic understanding about the, uh, associate, the association between capitalism and consumerism and happiness and well-being. Um, I'd like you to read the chapter, and here's a set of questions that I'd like you to have in mind while you're reading it, or uh, a set of questions that you should be able to answer uh, after you're done after you're done with it. So let's start off by um, asking you to look at the last chapter on page 128 that wraps up onto uh, page 129. Can you put into your own words the distinction between the two societies that uh, Gus Spess contrasts here? What's the contrast, and uh, why might it relate to what we're talking about in um, in our class? Uh, secondly, do you know Ed Diener? Ed Diener is a faculty member uh, at the University of Illinois, and he's the director of the uh, Beckman Institute. He's done a huge amount of work. He's a world leader in the study of well-being, human well-being. Um, I want you to look at the the, um, the chart on page one thirty-one that that describes some of Diener's work, and and be able to describe the implications for this chart. And I'm and I want to ask you this, why would Gus Speth put this in the chapter at this point? Um, then another uh, thing I want you to look at is the is the quandary on page 133. Um, this quandary, the quandary I want you to focus on is that um, it sure looks like there's a relationship between income and well-being or happiness up to a very small amount of income, about ten or twelve thousand dollars. But after ten or twelve thousand dollars, the relationship between increasing income and, and happiness disappears. There is no relationship. Um, but within a society, wealthier people seem to be um, a little bit happier than poor folks. So that's uh, something you get from that portion of the chapter. And I want you to I want to ask you how is it that on the one hand, across countries, there seem after about a ten thousand dollar income level. There's no predictive power of increasing income on happiness, but within a society, wealthier people seem to be happier. So how can that be? What's going on there? Uh, how does that work? Um, how can you explain that? How, how can those two things coexist that seem to be counterintuitive or at, each, at odds with each other? A um, couple more things I want you to focus on. What, what is social positioning? Be able to describe social positioning, be able to describe the hedonic uh, treadmill and this concept of habituation. What are those two concepts and how do they relate to um, the work that we do together? And then um, take a look at uh, pages 138 and 139. Uh, Speth argues that uh, GDP, gross domestic product, is a poor predictor of well-being. What are his criticisms there? What, is it, what are his criticisms about uh, GDP as being a poor predictor of well-being, and, and what are their alternatives to it? And finally, what I'd like you to take away from this chapter is um, uh, uh, Diener and Marty Seligman suggest that there are certain things that predict happiness and things that uh, predict unhappiness. What are those things? What would be nice of you, it would be wonderful, actually, if every educated person could be able to indicate or be able to describe uh, some large portion of the five things that really predict unhappiness and the and the six or seven things that predict happiness in life. Uh, the next thing I want you to do is look at a TED Talk uh, that addresses some of these questions and actually um, addresses the quandary of how, um, how we can have no relationship between happiness and high levels of income, and yet within a society, wealthier people seem to be happier. So take a look at that as well. There's a variety of things that you can look at. Um, that are optional readings for today. In fact, this today's I could fill up in half a syllabus on the really interesting work that's associated with this. Uh, but I've put a few things in the optional reading, and you're welcome to take a look at those. I look forward to uh, seeing you on Thursday of this week, and we, where we can talk a little bit about this and some other interesting things about the relationship between income, the economy, and sustainability. Bye.